Peace to the game, peace to the game, and welcome to Quit the Cat Podcast. Peace to the game, peace to the game. Welcome back to Quit the Cat Podcast. Yes, sir. It's your boy BP, alongside the Bishop. Yes, and we're coming sir. to you from Bang Bang Fitness Center here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Right. And today's guest, Uh-oh. ladies and Uh-oh. gentlemen, is the founder <laughs> and CEO of Volightfully Vegan. LLC, hey, y'all. which is an organization based on giving people good tips uh, when they're trying to do their transition into plant-based food, yep. eateries, yeah. I don't lifestyle, life, bam, mm-hmm. lifestyle, mm-hmm. Yes. you hear that, plant-based <laughs> lifestyle, yeah. you know what I'm saying, she started her journey five years ago, yes. you know, she said she started a fast, and next day, you know, she was like, this is the jam, so today, ladies and gentlemen, yes. we have Miss Marilyn Walker. Jackson, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. Please forgive me. Don't shoot me. Marilyn good. Jackson. Hello, everyone. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. All right. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I appreciate it. So I this is our it. first time meeting you in person. Yes. Well, me too. Me yeah. Person. We've yeah. talked a, a, yes. a few times about yes. working out. So yes. yeah. Over the years. Yeah, so, over yeah. the years. <laughs> Even before you started your journey. <laughs> yeah. It's been a, it's it's been been a, a long time. So it's nice to finally meet you in person. Not everybody's me. Everybody. Yeah, we all in here. <laughs> so we, so this is good because we're about to learn about you. And sometimes I normally know the story, but now I get to learn the story all right. from the beginning. So we want you to take us from the beginning. Tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, let me uh, give a little second. All right, here you go. You don't mind. Real quick, while we doing this. Mm-hmm. What's the vibe check, mm. Bishop? The vibe check. Don't know. worry about it. The vibe then came back around. What's your vibe today, brother? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Mm. I like it. I feel phenomenal. I like it. I That's a good. good one. Less is more. There we go. <laughs> Ms. Marilyn, how are you feeling? I'm today? good. I feel really good. Good? I feel really good. That's yeah. Allergies going off a little bit when oh, it's yeah. pollen, but Listen. other than that, I'm, I'm blessed. Summer, summer, Listen. summertime. And it don't, it doesn't <laughs> know if it wants to be summertime, springtime, wintertime. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we just, yeah, we just got to flow with that's it. That's what you need. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm feeling good. Feeling I'm good. feeling good. I know it's basic. I want to feel something crazy, but I feel good. You feel me? <laughs> that's how I feel. We want to say happy belated birthday. Oh, thank happy you. Belated birthday. Birthday. Thank you. I had an amazing birthday this year. An amazing birthday this year. We had a dinner party, um, and they came, my family came through. Like my dining room table is filled with flowers, That's gifts. I mean, you know, I, I always say, "Give me my flowers while I'm living." There you go. And so every year they show off for my birthday and Mother's Day. I'll be having flowers everywhere. Okay. So that's my thing. I love flowers. Right. But just to take you guys. Um, Back to, and excuse me, again, I have allergies going on, but um, just to take you back, uh, when I was a little girl, I would say, um, my dad used to take me to the gym Okay. when I was like, I want to say eight, nine. Okay. Uh, he worked for the depot. Okay. Um, he used to take me to the gym and just show me different things, and I went fishing, like probably some of the things he would do with a boy, but oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he didn't have a son, so he just, you know, he, he managed and taught me some things, okay. and um so, I want to say that my dad planted the seed um, for me, you know, trying to be healthy. Yes. Um, fast forward to, I want to say, 2000, uh, maybe 12, I want to say 12, 12 years ago. I'll just put okay. it up, put it at that. Um, we decided to do a 22-day green juice fast. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, so, it was my, my first time challenging my dad, but I was, like, scrolling on YouTube and and I was feeling sluggish and just not feeling, you know what I mean, myself. And I'm like, Dad, let's try this. You know, it's supposed to reboot your system. And um, so he was on board. He was like, you know, I'll go get all the stuff and um, you can juice it because I don't know what I'm doing. Right, and, right, you know right. what I mean? So he would bring the stuff down to the house. And every day, I, you know, I got mason jars and I would juice this, this green juice. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I passed out. Really? Yeah. I passed out. <laughs> so, this, so this is all juice all day, no All food. juice, nothing, nothing okay. to okay. eat. Juice and water. Just juice and water. Okay. Um, now, just reading up on, like, what can, that's like something that can happen, a part of the right. detox yes. thing. Right. Um, and it scared me. But, you know what I mean? I called the ambulance and everything, like, mm. you know, am I going to be all right? And by the time they were on their way, I called them back and was like, I'm good. I'm good. Like, I just started praying. It got off the floor. Sorry. Got off the floor, and I was good. After that point, um, I would say on day nine, when I tell y'all, I felt like an, like 
I was floating, you mm -hmm. know, just my mind was so yes, clear. Right, yes. I was I was thinking of all these creative things mm -hmm. and the cravings went away yes. and I just felt absolutely amazing. My dad did too. Um he stopped, I want to say halfway through. Really? He yeah, he was like, you know, cuz he's older. Um he rides his bike and and he was just like, you know, I I need I need substance like right, that, you know right. what I mean? So I went for I went forward um and it was twenty one days initially, but I went I wanted to challenge myself and just do an extra day so I did twenty two. Um and that was twelve years ago. So then fast forward to um two thousand eighteen, I got married. Okay. Um and we my at the time husband had moved to Gaithersburg, Maryland. Okay. And um, when we went down there, we started going to this church, like, right down the street from where we were living. And so, excuse me. <coughs> so, we started going to this church, and um, it was around, I guess, Lent season, and the church was starting a fast. So, um, you know, they asked if anyone wanted to join in. Of course, I wanted to. I just had this, this nudge and this feeling to do it. Yes. So, um, we, you know, my, my husband and I did, at the time did, did it together. Um, and the church was offering, like, you know, vegetables, rice, just different things to assist with the fast. Mm -hmm. So, um, I did it. And when I tell you, you know... It's the Daniel fast, right? Yes, okay. the Daniel. It was a Daniel fast. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a Daniel fast, and it was very challenging. But at the same time, I felt like I was braced to do it um, because I did not. I didn't crave anything after. Like once I started, it just flowed. Yeah, like okay. it just was so easy, and I didn't understand because I'm a I was chicken. Like chicken was my favorite. Like I just I loved. What you know what I mean? I love right. food. Right. So it was, um, it was just really, really easy for me to do, and <laughs> my at the time husband quit on me. I'm like, why is everybody else quitting on me? So he he quit on me on day 11, and he was like, you know, it felt really good, but again, he was working and he needed substance. So I was like, well, I'm still, I'm still going to keep going. Right. So I kept going, and um, this is going to be uh, spiritual, but it's my story. Yes. Um, I was sitting in the basement. Um, and I clearly heard the Lord, and I'm telling you, when I, I had my relationship with the Lord had gotten really, really strong at this point, mm -hmm. and I clearly heard him in my ear tell me to go out on the porch, on the front porch, and I'm like, well, you know, I don't be going out there on my front porch. We live in the country, right. like there be all types of stuff out there, so I'm used to going through the um, either the side door or the back door, so I'm like the front door, but I just I went took my, you know, I had a cup of coffee. And um, I took it out, and, we, and I sat on the porch, and he told me to look up. There was a tree in front of me, and there was two blue birds. And um, the, one, the one bird, literally, I watched drop a worm in the other bird's mouth. And I heard the Lord say, if I, if I provide for the birds of the air, what more will I do for mm. you? Get used to this lifestyle, because this is what you're going to be right. doing. Clear as day, right. just like that. And, of course, I got emotional, and I'm like, wow, okay. Um, so when the 40 days, when the 40 days came, um, of course, I didn't have this conversation with, with my at-the-time husband. Um, uh, there was just something between me and the Lord, but the 40 days came, and he's like, are you ready to go, you know, get something to eat? And I'm like, no, I'm going to continue. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, the Lord told me to keep going. So, right. And I said, and honestly, I don't want to go back. Like, right. I, don't, I don't like the way it, it made me feel. I feel the difference. I don't want to go back to what I used to do. Um, so, of course, he was supportive. Um, and um, I want to say that went on for a year. Um, me and my spouse at the time started having issues, and I moved back to Pennsylvania. Um, and I, you know, started a job, um, started working a lot. And I had lost weight, you know, I lost weight with the, um, with the fast, about 20 something pounds. And then when I started working, my job um, required me to do a lot of work, a lot of walking, a lot of lifting. Mm -hmm. So the weight just started falling off even more. So I'm, I'm down literally about 80 pounds at this point. Okay. Um, and I loved, I just loved the way I felt. I just, it was just amazing. And I was just like, I'm, I'm so glad, you know, that I started this. Um, just from one fast, like we, right, right, I don't right. know, you, you guys do fast throughout the years, you know, 
Um, but for me, it was just like, it was just amazing. So fast forward to, I want to say, hmm, three years ago. Where were we? 2023 now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So three years ago, um, I had to have surgery. I was having uh, female problems, like, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, gross on my, on my um, ovaries started having pain and stuff like that and um, I'm like what is going on so I went to the doctors and um, they said you know you have ovarian cysts and I had adenomyosis which is like a swelling of the uterus mm -hmm. it's probably too much for you guys but anywho <laughs> yeah, it's like. so um, they told me you know you can continue on but you're eventually going to have to have surgery so I'm like well I'm busy working right now I'm on a mission like I don't have time to be stopping for no surgery so I kept going for like a year after that, and then um, I was doubled over in pain, and I had to go mm -hmm. to the hospital, and they were like, well, you have, you need to get the, the surgery done. So um, I went on and had the surgery. During the surgery, um, or after the surgery, I would say during recovery, my body swelled up. I couldn't use the bathroom. Um, I was just like, what is going on? The doctor said, you know, the surgery took a little longer than what, what it should have. Um, and they were confused at, you know, what was going on. So, um, it took me, it took me about, I was supposed to be in the hospital overnight and I was in there for like a little over a week. Mm -hmm. Um, so once I left, once I left the, gyne the gynecologist care from the surgery, um, I went back to my family doctor and I'm like, you know, something's just not right. I don't feel myself. I'm achy. I'm tired. Like, it's just like the surgery just took a lot out of me. So they just started running all these tests and, um, it came back. The test came back that I had uh, lupus antibodies. So then they're like, well, we're going to send you to a rheumatologist. So uh, I went to the rheumatologist and um, they ran more tests. And they're like, you have lupus. And then you also have uh, Hashimoto's, which is like an autoimmune of the thyroid, okay. which explains why my, my, yes. my weight sometimes will go up and down over the years. Um, so even with you know, going to a plant-based diet, I made a mistake when I got back here. And the mistake that I made, I'm a, I'm a woman enough to admit it, um, I, even though I wasn't eating meat, um, a friend of mine turned me on to this drink at Starbucks. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I was doing all this work because I had left my, my spouse at the time. I'm like, I need a car, I need a house, I need all this stuff. So I'm, I need to just work, like right. doubles, twelves, and I need to get through work. So she was like, this is what a lot of people are drinking, is espresso drink, um, and it had milk and caramel. And crack. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Liquid crack. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> but when I tell you that drink got me through so many shifts, <laughs> and it, was, it just became an everyday thing. Right. And after doing research, that was my downfall. The milk, the dairy, right, right. it 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 made my um my uh the the what do you call it the growths or the cysts or yes. whatever it made them develop on my on my stomach mm -hmm. and all of that, or get worse I would say. Right. Um. So I knew that that was my that was, I don't want to say I blame it on myself, but I knew that I shouldn't have did it. You know what right, I mean? Right. I knew what I was doing before was working, right. but um so. Once um, they told me I had lupus, um, I'm trying. I'm sitting here like, well, I'm plant based. Like, why do I have this? But then I figured out, okay, the dairy probably agitated it. The right. and then I found out the surgery agitated it. So apparently, I've had it for years and just didn't know. Okay. Right, right. And the surgery flared it up. Okay. So I went through, you know, um, I went through a process of. Well, it's me. We all, you know what I mean? If you get a diagnosis, it, you know, it can get you depressed. It can get you, you know, just feeling all types of bad, mm -hmm. you know, thinking, what, well, did I do wrong? I don't deserve this, da, 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 da. Just sick all the time. And so um, I had several, and I know I'm kind of jumping around, but I had several uh, journals that I wrote in um, while I was down in Maryland um, during my fast. Okay. And um, the Lord had gave me business and ministry ideas okay. and I wrote them down in the journal I still have them and I'm going to keep them for the rest of my life um, and my business the business that I um, started is one of them okay. um, and I feel that you know this is my purpose 
um, it's something that was instilled in me from a long, long time ago. Me and my dad used to have so many conversations. And I have such a passion for, you know, people that have sicknesses or illnesses. I have such a passion for talking about food. Um, just, you know, and I feel like now with, with the lupus, it was like, okay, Lord, now I know why you told me I have to be plant-based for the rest of my life. Because mm -hmm. me reverting back to a regular standard American diet could land me in the hospital and potentially right. end my life. So um, it's very, very important for me to stay on the path that I'm on in order to have longevity in my life. So, so I, I got a question. Mm -hmm. so I said a lot. No, no, I, was, I, was I probably took y'all through no, my whole life. No, no, that's cool. So is it, was it just you and your dad? Mm -hmm. So It was me and my father. Um, I'm his only child. Okay. Um, so yes. It was just me and him. You mean during the... I'm just saying, because you didn't mention your mom. Oh, yeah. My mom... So, I have um, I have uh, two brothers and a sister. I'm sorry, Mommy. I know you're going to watch this. <laughs> um, but... And I, don't, and I love my mom, and I love my siblings. But my dad spoiled me. Like... Okay. He, I was the only child, and he just... You know, I had... Uh, rough siblings growing up, you know, they used to tease and all that kind of stuff. And it was just like, Dad, come get me. Like, get me out of here. <laughs> and he would come and get me. My grandparents at the time, I was their only grandchild. Like, so when I went to my dad's house, it was just me and my dad. So mm -hmm. he just, he spent a lot of quality time with me and showed me different things outside of my home with my, with my mom and my siblings. Um, my mom taught me a lot. She she actually gave me my spiritual background. Like okay. I got saved with my mom and um, grew up in church with my mom. That was definitely my mom's um, doing as far as like my spiritual background and my okay. spiritual beliefs. Now, not to say that my dad wasn't, but that just that wasn't his his thing, you know. Okay. Um, but yeah, she definitely um, took me to church. Took us all to church growing up. Um, she had her, you know. She she was a she was a black mama. You know what I mean? She she raised us. She she did what she had to do and I thank her honestly for introducing me to the Lord because, you know, honestly, I don't know who else would, you know. Um but she definitely has uh a strong spiritual relationship with the Lord to this day. She's a, a deacon at her church now, so um I owe that that I owe that to her for sure. Um but as far as uh, the health part um, I feel like I am a staple now in her life to help her get her health on track because she's having some health issues now. So, um, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to go back. I got to go back. Yes. Because, um, and I'm, I got to ruffle your feathers. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It's all good. <laughs> in order to get to, so when I, so when you say you love food, mm -hmm. yes, I got to take it back. So, I want to go back before. Uh, before the initial fast that you did with your dad, mm -hmm. how how were you? How 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 was eating, and how was the respect for yourself then before mm -hmm. the fast came along? Because mm -hmm. like I understand that the working out was your father's lifestyle; mm -hmm. that was something that. But for you, how how much of conscious were you when it came to food and? Because when I, and I say this because when you when you we use the word we love food mm -hmm. and I I'm a I'm a chakra man um, that to me you know that's the third chakra and mm. and and it's a a thing where that's our pleasure we love it when we put love on something that is just supposed to nourish, nourish our body yeah. and the, so that's a that's an obsession like. Mm -hmm. So how did that come about? What what was it replacing? Because to love food is dangerous. Right. So Absolutely. What was that coping for? Um, I, I maybe relationship issues. Um, you know, I had like some rough breakups over the years, and I, I was I found myself spending a lot of time alone, um, and. You know, my grandmother could cook, my mom could cook, and I, you know, figured out I can cook, you know what I mean? And I just was like, you know, I just would find a recipe and I would just 
cook it and it turned out to be really good and I would, it would just be me and my plate of food at home, you know, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I, I would say probably um, having rough uh, relationships through the years, um, I developed maybe a love or obsession yeah, for food. Mm -hmm. um, but when I went on the fast, um, I tried to fix, like, because it's a mental thing, yes. you know, you put your plate yes. down, yes. it's like, okay, just like a person quitting cigarettes, you know what I mean? You're like, I'm so used to putting something to my mouth, right. what am I going to do now? Like, and I'm drinking this juice that has literally <laughs> a sour taste to it, right, so right, it's right, like, right. I really had to dig deep, you yes. know, to figure out, like, okay, I, I am doing too much, you know what I mean? I am obviously attached to okay. food because yeah. we can we all yes. honestly yeah. we all can get attached to food if it especially if it tastes yes. good um so i found myself on youtube a lot just looking up different people looking up different um um recipes or just different things that i can like once i get off of this fast i don't want to go back to what i was doing before i want to make healthier choices i don't want to be attached to anything mm -hmm. you know once you once something is taken from you you realize how much you're you are attached yes. to it i love that you asked me that yeah that was that was dope so i appreciate that um i mean because it's real it, it really is real um and i feel like now um let's take this passion let's take this love um and not make it an addiction let's you know yes be healthy, make better choices, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing wrong with loving food to an extent, um, but like you said, it is it is to nourish it is to nourish our body. And one of the um, herbalists that I follow now, um, his name is uh, Yaki Awaken. I don't know if you ever heard of him. No. Listen, he'll change your life. <laughs> like, he's he is really, 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 really dope. Um, he gets into the anatomy of the body, yes. you know, what food does to your body, mm -hmm. what it does to your cells, mm -hmm. um, you know, how it nourishes mm -hmm. your body and, and why we're even addicted to food. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, he, he digs really deep into it. So I'm glad that I, I found him. Shout out to, to, to Rocky Awaken if you ever come across this video. Um, but, yes, he there is, um, what is it called? There's certain, I might, I can't remember all of them, but there's three um, herbs that you can ingest, take, drink, however you want to say it, that helps with food addictions. Mm -hmm. um, because, again, that, that is something that, that a lot of people deal with. That's why there's a lot of people that are, you know, we're overweight, mm -hmm. we're, we're sick, you know, we're mm -hmm. just dealing with all of these things. And honestly, it's due to an addiction of food. Yes, that leads to, like you said, other things transpiring and happening in your body. Mm -hmm. You know, overeating and it, when your blood can't function and your intestine causes all types of uh, complications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you start to get depressed and you mm -hmm. start to get uh, anxiety, things flare up, and then your body's making more cortisol and then your then these cells open up for cancer and yes. diabetes, and then here comes stroke, and then here comes heart attacks, and I, I it, this is why it comes down to a lot of things. I like to break it. That's why I we can put it in all types of facets. When mm -hmm. the Bible says the few are chosen, and right. only few will make it, right. that is true. It is because very true. when you have the knowledge that's right before you. You know, I, it's I am I am very conscious, and I look at dead people walking all day. Long. Mm, listen, but dead people walking yes, all day long. Um, absolutely, I hear the excuses, and the only thing it, it tells me that you're willing to live in survival mode just to die early. Mm. You know, so I don't get too enthused by future plans from people that are walking dead right. because, like, people are building things and legacies that they're not going to get to see fulfilled somebody else is going to you're just making it for somebody else because you'll be leaving soon mm -hmm. um, you cannot escape Sound like that. Moses and uh... you can't escape it <laughs> yeah you can't yeah. escape it um you know so I try to people that are in their 30 I try to the younger people I try to hurt like you know because it's not that generation if you really look it's not that generation I want to say 
35, like, you know, you got the millennials, you got all these different things breaking down, but I would like to say my generation, you just turned 44 before. Yes. Um, I turned 44. It's my uh, Obama year. Okay. And, um, Happy early birthday. Yes. <laughs> I say that to say that if you haven't started, <laughs> if you haven't, people that's past 35 and you keep thinking that or 30, wherever you, if you haven't started, mm -hmm. it's going to get harder. Mm -hmm. um, when that 45 comes, that 50 comes, oh yeah, you better have Medicare yeah. or whatever type of insurance Listen. you need because you're going to be there. Yes. There is no way. Fats, that the, the cells in your body from fat cells, they start to break down and turn into things that's harmful for your body. Right. You cannot escape that. Right. And it's harder to get off because the metabolism's slowing all the way down. Right. So it starts to come into that mind frame where you won't do nothing, but you'll be just living a life full of excuses. Mm -hmm. If you pay attention and listen to them, yeah. listen. Let, let people talk and listen to them. Yeah. It's excuse after it's excuse, excuse, it's excuse yeah. after excuse. It's the food so, talking. Yes, and it, it's, <laughs> um, you know, it's, I, I like to look at it. That's no different than somebody shooting heroin. There's, mm. It's no different than somebody, whatever the drug choice is. Like, it's going to kill you eventually because it's not made for you. Right. It's not for you. So right. I am thankful that you are on that journey and that you have had your awakening. Um, through your, through your, I know, cause I, I, I can just imagine what that transition was like, you know, from yeah. the divorce, um, just, just your body, cause a lot of that, that was happening was from you internalizing the things that you oh, were yeah, going through. Oh yeah, for sure. Was, Half you know, of my life has been, honestly, like relationship issues, like, yeah. and God knows, <laughs> Like, God and the devil, I want to say. The enemy knows what to use to trip you up or get you distracted, you know, to get you off your, off your, um, off your, off your post. You know what I'm saying? So, I was, relationships, any type of trauma will set you back yeah. if you allow it. Yeah. Um, and, unfortunately, it has been an issue for me. Okay. But I take, I'm trying to take that energy, as my son was saying, transmute it to something positive. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You take that fight, you take that... Mm -hmm frustration and anger and it's like okay that's not my focus mm -hmm. what is my focus what is my purpose why am i here we talk about credit we talk about um money we mm -hmm. talk about you know religion we talk about all each of these other. things mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. but when do we talk about health when do we talk about you know because honestly that is the your body is your foundation for yeah. life yeah. you know what i'm saying and, you know, I talked to um, the pastor at my church, and I'm like, you know, I, I want to get this this program started. One of the ministries um, under my belt called Back to Eating Healthy. And I'm going basically be going to the church and um, feeding the food bank workers, you know what I mean, that never had plant-based food. And it's not, you know, to try to force my lifestyle on mm -hmm. everyone else. However, when you, when you have that... You see my face? Awakening. What's that? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you have yeah. that awakening, as you as you put it, which it is, mm -hmm. um, it's such a liberating freedom, and it's like you want everybody to feel it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! It's like you don't you don't understand how I feel. You don't understand how I think. You don't understand. Like you need to get. You need to tap into this. Like this is. It's, it's amazing. You know what I mean. You're close. You're close to the Most High. Like you, you can have these conversations. Like and it, and it's just. It just you know makes you not want to abuse your body no more. What? You know. <laughs> it makes you not want to abuse your body. The industry, the food industry, is tied into the pharmaceutical yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. I know you. You. Come you, on, you I'm yeah. Keep going. This, this is you. So Come they on. are tied into keeping us sick. Yes. They are putting MSG. Yes. There, there's so many chemicals that's being put in our food yeah. that yeah. are keeping us sick. You ever see the movie um, Six Sense yep. with the little boy mm -hmm. and how the the stepmom kept putting a little cap. A mm -hmm. pine saw and the the little girl's uh, food. It mm -hmm. kept her alive, but it kept her sick. Mm -hmm. It kept her alive, but it kept her mm -hmm. sick. Eventually, she died. Mm -hmm. right. So they take that same analogy. Yes. That little cap of pine saw is what they're doing to our food. Right. It's right. keeping us alive. It's, we're alive, but it's keeping us sick. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So 
once you come to, to knowledge of that, it's like everything that you were taught growing up, unfortunately, it was a lie. Right, right. It was a lie. All of these foods, milk does a body good. No, it doesn't. So, here I go. <laughs> here I go. Here I go. Mm -hmm. This is a jam, so let him jam. That's all right. Now, that's why there's no miracles in the church. Mm -hmm. That's why the black churches are not striving. Right. They're not connected to God. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of talk. Yeah, absolutely. There, there can't be unhealthy preachers. You're not connected. If you're, God gave you a vessel. Yes. The vessel, listen, I had a guy tell me. He came in here. He, he was telling me about when, when he went to the Congo. Mm -hmm. And he was in the car. And he was riding in the Congo. And he was on a retreat. Mm -hmm. And he said, the guy stopped the van. And he stopped the van. He said, we got to stop for a second. He said, why? It was six uh, gorillas came down and was in the middle of the road. Mm. He said it had to have been about six, eight, three hundred and something pounds. Mm. Massive. You know what they eat? Hmm. Leaves, that's mm -hmm. it. You know what they eat? Mm -hmm. they Fruits, eat. berries. Mm -hmm. And they're massive. Mm -hmm. You see what they eat? Like, God provides. And for us to be natural law and to be what God says, I, I see so many people claiming that God speaks through them or they have the Holy Ghost or they speak in tongues. And yet, their body reflects otherwise. Mm -hmm. You cannot be what you say. You feel it. Mm -hmm. You know it. Mm -hmm. In your fast, God was able to speak to you. Had clarity. Directly. Yeah. He couldn't speak to you when you was in. So when you hear people, because you, you're, you're vouching that he spoke to you. Oh, yeah. In your clarity of mm -hmm. cleansing your body. Mm -hmm. But there's people standing in the pulpit. People sitting in church saying, God told me this. God said to do this. Let me lay hands. But yet you can't refrain from food. Mm -hmm. How powerful is your God? Because see, we don't serve the same God. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will feel some type of way if I say I love and God speaks through me and I'm not connected. Right, right. You, you can't tell me you're connected. And when, and when you, it's not just about religion. Learn, it, you can go into science and learn the body. Learn how it's connected. Mm -hmm. How each center is connected from head to toe. You can come, you can bring the energy from the bottom up or you mm -hmm. can receive it from the bottom down. But if it's coming from the bottom down, you can't just tell me it stops at your mind and heart, but it doesn't regulate you to eat, eat right? Right, right. That you're addicted to food, that we're walking around here with addictions. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a minister tell so me he, he couldn't me, give up chicken. So I'm you're like, telling me <laughs> God's not strong enough for mm -hmm. that? But that's why there's no miracles in the church. Mm -hmm. That's why the gun violence hasn't stopped because collectively, what's power? Mm -hmm. So why should anyone connect to religion in right, that fast right. when the whole church is unhealthy? Mm -hmm. I'm not sitting under a health, unhealthy preacher. Them days is over. I know. I uh, them know. days is over. I know. You, uh, you, uh, like, there's research that shows brains from our ancestors versus ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's shrinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's shrinking from just the abuse from social media, from TV, from the food, from uh, things that we all are, all our pleasures of that is from external. Right. God yeah. is from internal. Right. He's within. So yeah. if you need to eat food and sit and it makes you feel good and it makes you shout and you need another plate and now you're excited and you bopping, all your, all your pleasure comes external. Mm -hmm. That's not God. Right. That's not Absolutely. God at all. Absolutely. And we can talk the word. And I can go show you scripture where who got to be aligned because uh, gluttony is gluttony. Uh, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking. I said, he's talking about one of the sins that's in there. It's in there. And they sitting up there unhealthy. I mm -hmm. look at them, but you up there hooping and hollering. There's no power. Talking about the Lord's going to heal There's me. The no Lord's going to heal me. Yeah. There's no power. Faith, I, my famous line is faith without works is dead. Listen, we are. That's why when you intimate fast. Mm -hmm. Like I even broke down to the point where I'm cool with small meals. Even if I only eat two a day, I feel better. Right. People ask, why are you so energetic? How are you so happy all the time? Because I ain't eating all that stuff that everybody's Call, eating. Your I don't, listen, yeah. I don't care what the event is. I don't care what's on the table. I promise you, I, I, my favorite character is Noah. Mm -hmm. He said it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, and that's the same thing. It's going to rain. It's going to rain in your life. Each individual, it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. 
if you care enough and you want what's on the other side of, listen. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. 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 It's a difference of going out there and earning and and working and and working doubles and all that. That's not manifestation. It's not. Ooh, people getting cars not. and mm -hmm. they're out here struggling and working eighty hours. That's not manifestation. Mm -hmm. That's not manifestation. It's a distraction. And, and, and it's earned. So when people, oh, I manifest this car. No, you work for that. Mm -hmm. That's not manifestation. Because mm -hmm. see, that thing, it, to be aligned, to be able to have that, it, oh, you got to be you, aligned. Can, let me, oh, can yeah, I, let me say you. this. What's on you? What you saying that, like, literally, I was working myself to death. Mm -hmm. I was working myself to death. And I knew with that surgery, what that was God saying, you're doing too much. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. You're not listening. Yeah. This is not yeah. what I have for you. Yeah. I have better Ooh, better and more purpose for you. Well, you work in all them hours. Yes. Like, it, it, where, where do it, I fit yes. in? That's not, God's not going to give you something you have mm -hmm. to struggle to get. No. That you got to yeah. be tired to get. That you would dread getting up to go do. Nah, that mm -hmm. ain't God. That's mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. That's self. It is an alignment that is so internal that external things won't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's all I, when I see, you know, I, 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 I've come from that background, I understand. Mm -hmm. But yet all these people that confess and say they love what God has given you, but you don't take care of the main, the main thing, thing that he gave you. You know, and, and, and it's, it's this thing where they, I think the scripture, and especially because I've been hearing that's Western civilization talk, where they, I'm just going to take off this immortal body and I'm going to go to heaven and walk the streets of gold. Ah, mm. ah. God's not going to just allow you to abuse this body just waiting to get to heaven mm. and you just do it whatever you mm. want with neglect, but you still going to go? Mm. You still going to walk? You still. How does that make sense? Because the one thing that he holds dear that he gave you, you neglect. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one thing for sure, I know, and I tell, and we can argue about this all day because I read neural stuff, the brain diminishes with the body. Mm -hmm. So the bigger the person is, the bigger the heart is. Mm -hmm. The brain shrinks, and that is a fact mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it is struggling to keep up with everything. To keep up. Yeah. So the moment the stroke comes, the moment the heart attack comes, them things are coming because you're abusing the body. Mm -hmm. The blood's not regulating the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So they're not always looking. I'm just sitting there like, they just living to die. Yeah. Waiting to die. Yeah. Just it's in sad. case you think. Because at the end of the day, God said, heaven on earth, you create what you think. You present your walk, your environment. Right. You give birth. When you speak words, it becomes your life. We're no different than what God, we, we are God. What you speak come to life. Right. How you feel? They say what we do is 7% conscious. Yes. Everything else is subconscious. Yes. What you think, how you walk, what you're birthing, it, it, it don't have to come out your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's coming from coming here. From, coming up from here. And that's going to be more. There's people sitting on them pews in the same spot. The kids For 20-something years. The kids, yeah. Listen, come on. <laughs> if we, listen, if you had 10 collective people on the same path, well, it can change something. Mm-hmm. It can mm -hmm. change some. It can change the streets. Mm -hmm. It can change. It's not because everybody you say you listen. We are wired to be attached to something. Right. That's in us. Mm -hmm. We're wired to believe in something. I say it all the time. People with Harley Davidson, what they do? Tat it up. They be Harley Davidson. I'm down. You down with the crew? You down with whatever? Because we're made to be wired to believe, mm -hmm. to move with something. Mm -hmm. But yet, there's power in what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to Profession of, confession of God, but God, when you have that, it's miracles, it's things changing in your life, the situations with your family changing. I'm talking about it's so strong that mm -hmm. everybody that's connected to you feels it. Feels it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now there's people now, it's forming fashion right now. Mm -hmm. And that's been the season for the longest. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that. I, it's a bunch of sleep people. Mm -hmm. The church is sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody say. And the one that we're trying to argue with is the unhealthy pastor. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. church is sleep because you're sleep. Mm -hmm. If you're at the head and you say you have the power, the change has to start with you. Yeah. 
And that's why every can do. Because see, if the ch if we doing right and we living right, I promise you, we won't be having to pray for Sister Janice while she's going through. Why? Because Sister Janice is eating bad. We ain't got to pray for Sister Sarah. Why? Because Sister Sarah's eating bad. Everything we're praying for is people's own neglect. Their own decisions. Oh, I'm going to save yeah. my prayers. Y'all go ahead. Mm. You go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm telling I'm gonna you. I'm going to save them. I'm going to save them. <laughs> but if the church understands that first, mm -hmm. the body must be healthy. Mm -hmm. The blood must regulate yes. in order to be. Yes. It's fighting against. Like, that's what Yaki talked about. Um, basically, when you're eating meats, when you're eating dairy, and, mm -hmm. and it goes into your body, mm -hmm. right? Your cells mm -hmm. are natural. It's mm -hmm. like, what is this? Mm -hmm. What is this? Your body's like, what is this? This mm -hmm. does, it doesn't belong in here. Mm -hmm. So then it forms extra mm -hmm. mucus. Mm -hmm. it, it it's in, now inflamed yep. because it's infected, yep. so to speak. Yep. Because now it's trying to process this food to get basically to, to process it and then to get it out because it doesn't belong in there. So now you have clogged arteries. Mm -hmm. Now you have. Um, mucus, everyone, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's just because it's basically your body's defending yes. a foreign object because yes. it's not supposed yes. to be in your body. Yes. Um, so, of course, that's like you said, where you get the diabetes, this is where you get um, mm -hmm. all of the diseases, cancer, mm -hmm. um, all of this stuff is, is all from our diet. And I just don't understand why it's so hard for people to grasp that, people to understand it. Um, you know, and we don't try to come off to be judgmental um, because at the end of the day, people are sick. Yeah. We're going off of off of ancestors and slavery times and what we used to I'm do. I call it judging. I call it measuring. To yeah. judge means to measure. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. if you look up judge, it mm -hmm. means to measure. To measure, okay. So we're not judging, we're right. measuring. But there's some people yeah. that say, I don't care what they you're, say. you're, <laughs> I, listen, I, don't, I don't care. There are people that be like, you're judging me oh, just well, because you're doing right, it. Yeah. I'm I like, am, listen, yeah, I'm just trying to get you, I am. I'm but trying I'm, to get you to get better. Nah, like, we all get judged. You just say, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm judging you. I'm measuring you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Get I it am. together. Yes, Get I'm, it together. Like, what you want to okay. do? I, I feel like I, like I told um, this one lady at the at the uh, the um, the church for the um, food bank. I said I I truly believe that myself along with others we're coming after the Daniels. Like this is a Daniel movement. Like what, what, there's some people that are just called to a higher conscious. They're just called to a higher thing. So, and not everybody's going to get yes. it. You want everybody to, yes. but unfortunately, not everyone is going to get it. But until we wake up and understand that everything starts with your diet, mm -hmm. everything starts with who mm -hmm. you who you are and whose mm -hmm. you are, mm -hmm. you're going to continue to walk around mm -hmm. lost. You're going to continue to walk around sick. Your, your mind you can't think straight. You know what I'm saying? Because you're literally physically sick. Like you said, you're yeah. walking dead. Walking I would, dead. It, yeah, I, forgive me for saying this, but I, even, even down to when I see people get their food medium rare mm. and the blood still in there. Mm -mm. And, and, and I'm just like they don't understand the the connection um, that you're making with that with that food mm -hmm. and with it being raw and that blood going in and it's connecting to your cells yeah. and it's connecting to your body and then you wonder why people are uh, enraged and they're they're doing things and they're barbaric and they're they're uh, angry angry and they just mm -hmm. like just if you think about it the first thoughts of Man, once they broke apart from God was, I need to rule. Mm. Even those that put us in captive and brought us here, their main thing was, I need to rule. I am God. Mm. I am the next. You, you don't see too many people trying to, to be that far up that I am God. I am, talk to me and then I'll go to God. That thing, it has, it. that is that religious organized monarchy mm -hmm. so to say mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. we, we have da adapted that so now people in the church are looking for the pastor to talk to god for them and to say to them or he's going to pray for me and this is going to change mm. you have the power to heal your body the only reason people can't heal their body is because there's no connection god's not coming to send a connection you have to be aligned <laughs> You, you mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. we, I mean, because we can go back. There wasn't medicine. There wasn't the stuff that we have now that's mm -hmm. supposed to do. This thing was done naturally. And then when you look at the years that people were living compared to now, of course time has slowed up and people are dying earlier. People are not living to 130, 140. Look at all the things that's distracting you from knowing how to be with self. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then they're doing, doing mass production of food too. And, and, and they're injecting is. them with and stuff so to make more and more yes, and more. The, the, the most thriving countries are the sickest. Mm. It's the stats. You can look it up. Mm-hmm. America is one of the sickest mm-hmm. countries oh, yeah. in the world. I do know that. Yeah. Sickest. Oh, yeah. We yeah. might got money. You might got billionaires, cars, and all. But you're the sickest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the sickest. So it, when you look at it, um, it is blatantly in front of you. Um, people are blind to it with sight. And only thing you can do is love them and be prepared to bury them. Mm-hmm. And yeah. be okay with it because Absolutely. that is the part of acceptance. Mm-hmm. You, know, you have it, to it, eventually it, because it, you'll be stressed out yeah. trying you, to help people that just don't want to. They yeah. don't want to see, and mm-hmm. you have to accept that they're not going to see. It. They're mm-hmm. not going to change. They're mm-hmm. not going to. So you know when I um, I, it's cool up front. When people shouting, oh, God, they're preaching and their sermons is up. But I know when that camera shuts off or that crowd leaves that mm-hmm. church, oh, I can just have conversations when you're by yourself mm-hmm. and you're praying, but you're still sick. And mm-hmm. you're like, God, I thought, what did I do? Mm-hmm. God, why I'm don't still you dealing me? with this. God, I said, I ain't got no or don't blame it on the thorn in the side. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you got to no. put the work in. That's you. Yeah. You have to That's put the you. work in. And if you abuse, if you've been a, uh, I, I want to say, a fool crackhead for all your life. Mm-hmm. Do you think that you're just going to be clean in one day? Do you think you're going to be clean in one year? It's going to take a lot of time. The rest of your life, honestly. Yeah. If, if you spent the first half of your life being unhealthy, doing whatever you wanted to do, and then you make that decision, it, this is now a rest of your life decision. This is a rest of your life journey. And every day, you're challenging yourself, what can I do different? What can I add to today? Or what can I take away today? Like, for the rest of your life, do it every single day. I don't care how small, you know, and that's what I try to, 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 to tell people. If you can't do it cold turkey, like I did, I did it cold turkey. There's some people that can, but if you can't, Make a small change every single mm-hmm. day because this is the rest of your life. Let me ask you a question. Now that you have switched and you have changed, mm-hmm. how's your relationships? Mm. How do you handle those now? So much better. I, now, along with therapy, I did go to therapy too um, because my uh, last marriage was such, it was just so stressful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I did it, you know, with therapy and, and as long as my diet. But I'm, I'm now single, um, but I enjoy conversations mm-hmm. i enjoy talking things through mm-hmm. with people you know and, and it's not just a relationship that you have with a mm-hmm. spouse or a boyfriend mm-hmm. a girlfriend whatever mm-hmm. it's your relationships with your mm-hmm. children mm-hmm. it's your relationships mm-hmm. with your parents you know mm-hmm. your friends your cousins mm-hmm. and i find myself being so like hum more, more humble mm-hmm. Calm, mm-hmm. you know. I see a like if a person, if I'm, a person is upset, you know, irate or what have you. Um, I get upset sometimes too. I'm not perfect, but I look at it from something's going on with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I understand that they're sick. I understand mm-hmm. that there's something going mm-hmm. on. So it's like I have more understanding, clarity. more more clarity, more yes. patience, you know. Um, and people are always saying to me, you know, you you've changed, you've changed. Yes, I absolutely yes. have. Certain, absolutely certain yeah. stuff that they put in it blocks clarity. Mm-hmm. It, it block. It does. They put. Uh, I don't want. It's, it's a word. I, it's, it's, it's escaping me now. But they put it in there, and it damages your brain. Mm-hmm. It um. It it numbs uh, certain responses. Right. Right. So the more you pout, the more you're confusing. The more you're congested. That's even in your response and how you feel. Mm-hmm. There's some people that you can say something that's so simple, but they're going to take it a certain way because they don't know Offensive. how to feel it. Because their feelings is all, it's discombobulated. Yeah. Listen, when I tell you that they say, and it's not, that's why they say gut feeling, your feelings, your emotions, mm-hmm. all that comes from your gut. If, mm-hmm. your gut's, if your gut's not right and it's not functioning and you're not going to the bathroom and you're not doing things regularly, how are you going to know how you really feel? Mm. Your emotions is going to be just as boggled and as your, as your, as your body. Yeah. So it, it, and when people are like, I'm confused, I'm depressed, and I'm sitting there, huh, I bet. You think? Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> when's, the last, you, uh, what, yes. when's the last time you went to the bathroom last yes. week? What? Yes. Oh, so God. you're when wondering, you, like, no, literally, listen, there's people that. Yeah, just, I know, I've heard of it. It's like, so, what? I go crazy. three, four times a day. Yes. <laughs> so when you, when you are in tune with that, you're clearer. When you're putting in food that's clear and clean, that adjusts and agrees with your body. Mm-hmm. 
that's your output. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your output's going to be more understanding. You're going to have more clarity. You're going mm -hmm. to see things. You're going to have a different outlook on life. Yes. And the more that you do that, the more that you get, and the more that you're going to want that. And it, I get it. It's troubling. You do want that for people, but there's a time where you just say, yeah. You know, I, I like, I love all my clients. Mm -hmm. I love them all. I love them. And there's some that they... You're in it because I love you, mm. not because you're doing what you're right, to do. right, right, right. And that's my grace for you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So it's 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 not about the money. It is about just being like Noah. It's mm -hmm. going to rain. Mm -hmm. I just get here to tell him it's mm -hmm. going to rain. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just keep telling you it's going to rain. And when I say that, I mean that figuratively, where it's going to come. Mm -hmm. That point's going to come. So I feel like. Some people's coming to that door and the door saying, you need to change your life or you need to do they shut the door out. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so it's I know it comes crazy. to visit you and you can't keep confessing that you love God and he doesn't come to visit you to tell you you ain't right. Mm -hmm. So the moment you want to tell me that you're you're speaking for God, but then you shut God's voice off because I know he came to tell you that your body wasn't right. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. he came to tell you, hey, you got a sickness in there. He was telling you, got something's wrong in here. Mm -hmm. You need to go find out what's wrong. What you do? You go mm -hmm. find out. And you did what you were supposed to do to make that change. But there's a lot of people shutting that door. Mm -hmm. They're shutting the door right in the face. And they come out, oh, I love the Lord. God bless. How you doing today? I'm blessed and highly favored. But you're about to die. You're blessed and highly favored. But yet, you on 10 different medications. You got to go do boom, 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 boom. You can't even walk up the steps. Can't but, even you're but, but you're, you're professing the Lord. But you're is he heals and I'm, I'm healed. So I'm healed. You wonder why. Mm -hmm. People's not coming to run in the church wanting something that you have. Mm. They're not coming in there. The kids is not, they, like, people's not running there to say, yo, they got something that I want. They're not carrying something that you want. Mm. That's why there's people in there and they're like, I need more. Because you know what? You're around a bunch of unhealthy people mm. and that doesn't spit you. God would, listen, we had come to this thing where you think you got to be in the building. No, you don't got to be in the church mm -hmm. when God said you gather with those that. And agreeing to that right. know my name. Right. You, gotta, yeah, mm -hmm. you gotta find that tribe. That's mm -hmm. why people bouncing from church to church and they yeah, because something's missing. It's not that's not what it is. And when we stop running to that building and we get in tune with self, and right. I think that's where the growth comes. And then you'll be able to, you know, see what it is. I had a young lady once to me say, I ain't seen you in church, you just fall away from the Lord. My life is blessed. This you can never tell me I fall mm -hmm. away from anything. Mm -hmm. Anything. That's religion, I think. Yeah, that's, it is. That's it being is. sad. That it says is. you got to be in a physical yeah, domain. I don't, like, don't, don't want to say I can't sit. You don't want to be around a bunch yeah, of sick people. Yeah. <laughs> Our energy's not the same. Mm -hmm. Cause mm -hmm. I, I, I be I, listen. I'm nice. I, I'm humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I ain't running around. You're fat and unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Gotta hurt their feelings. Right. Man, the F word. Don't call me fat. That became a cuss word. It became a dirty word. It, no, that's a reflection, and you don't like it. Mm. If, if I say the word fat and you don't like it, that means something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Cause the word fat is just the word fat. But if you take it personally yeah. and you're offended by the yeah. word fat, something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. means you're fat. Mm. And that means you're bothered. Mm -hmm. And you don't like it. And you don't like it. <laughs> I, do, I say myself right now. I say the fact, y'all. So that's my thing. I'm not hype about it. Right. But you know what I mean? Yes. Like, y'all had a great conversation. Um, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. No, it's good. I was like, I'm learning what I'm learning. And we coming up on time. Yeah, I know. I'm like, damn. I'm like, all right, that's cool. No, but... uh Cause that's, uh, I mean, I work out here, mm -hmm. but then I'm like, that's my journey is the food. Like, right. I, I don't love food, mm -hmm. but I do like food. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, so what would you give someone? Like, how would you get somebody started in a plant based journey? Okay, so if, if we could do that real quick, because oh, I don't want to cut you off. Two minutes. You got, yeah, yeah, two yeah, minutes. You feel oh, me? Lord. <laughs> Dang, that went by quick. That was moving. Um, so yeah, that's that's where because a lot of people, you know, are caught up on the the, the vegan plant based. Raw, there's pescatarian, there's all these different things. Um, and I believe that mine is vegan because um, it's basically a transition. Okay. Like from your regular lifestyle to to becoming plant-based. Okay. Um, my angle is to take foods that people love, like spaghetti. You know, us, us <laughs> people, we love spaghetti, fried chicken, you know, just different things. So I try to take... Um, those foods and make them turn them you know make them right, vegan right, obviously right. um so just because our minds are so set on what we used to do right, yeah. so um again my angle is to just go that route so that 
people can taste spaghetti and say, oh my gosh, there's no difference. Right, like it tastes right. really, really good. Well, this is the food that you love. Mm -hmm. We're just going to turn it into a healthier right. version. Right, right. Yeah. It is mental. Plant-based is delicious, yeah. though. Yeah. It's delicious. I wish they had more spots around here. And that's, well, yeah, I'm working towards Go ahead and talk I'm, about I'm, it, baby. <laughs> that's what you was about. Go ahead. I'm, wor I'm working towards that. So um, right now I do catering. Um, I do pop-up dinner sales. Um I'm doing an event, not the event, but I'm doing something for the church. That's that's free. That's not something I'm getting paid for. Um, but we have an event coming up in May, uh, May 27th, uh, a Save the Streets event at Italian Lake okay. um, from 2 to 8 p.m. Um, another event for the state troopers, that will be in September. Okay. Like, I try to each month have a, a, a vending event where okay. people can just come up and, and, and you know, try, try our food. Right. Um, eventually, I would like to have a physical location. Um, um, it's coming. Yeah, oh, it's coming yeah. for sure. God already, mm -hmm. he already showed me, like, I just got to put in the, the footwork and, right. and just get my name out there a little bit more and just bring awareness, you know what I'm saying? Right, I'm trying right. to get, I'm also trying to get linked up with um, organizations like UPMC for Healthy Harrisburg just to start a conversation. Right, like, right. just to start a conversation on health, just to start a conversation on changing the way we eat. Absolutely. Yeah. To ultimately change our minds That's and change yeah. our bodies. Yeah. Tell them where they can find you. Well, you can find me, um, Delightfully Vegan on Facebook. We are on Instagram, uh, Delightfully, excuse me, DelightfullyVegan at gmail.com. Um, we have a website we're working on as well. Um, I brought a business card, uh, but my phone number is 717-963-4730. Um, you can always direct message me on, I should be looking up here, I'm sorry. You can um, <laughs> direct Sounds message good. me on social media, um, ask me any questions. I, I've said this in my last interview. I don't care if it's 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. If you're struggling, you got a question, mm. you, you're tired of the way you're living, you're tired of what you're doing, and you just need somebody to talk to, you need help, please reach out to us. Please reach out to me. I'm here. Yes. Um, it's, this is my passion, um, and I believe God graced me to do this. So. Yes. We appreciate yes. it. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Like, that's, that's my nah, y'all was right. I said, I said, oh, <laughs> I just... <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean, I'm about to learn something right now because I because both of y'all coming from the aspects that y'all come from, mm -hmm. you fitness, you food. I'm like, I got it. the fitness part is easy now. Yeah. I like doing that part. It's the food. I be like, ah, I need some food. But and then when you're working what, out, it makes you hungry. Yeah, I don't know about you. No, but for I, me, I actually don't be hungry. Really, after it I makes work. I get hungry cool. after I work out. Yeah, <laughs> like, I be cool, but yeah. there's just learning more about the plant based lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So we definitely appreciate you coming like, through. This is a thin guy in there. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. I see him in my head. I just got to get to him. him. I, listen, he in there. He in there. I know he in there. He, he, well, I, I got gotta, you. If you want to talk to me, I got I you. I absolutely he the biggest, will. Yeah. He, absolutely. He, he the lightest guy you ever seen move, I promise you. <laughs> he, listen, he, he, he in there. Yeah. I know he in there. Yeah. I know it. bring him out. Absolutely. Let's do it. bring him out. Absolutely. It's never too late. I ain't never too late. We still here. It's never too late. We got time, man. You can physically, if you go on a three-day fast, a 30-day fast, 90-day fast, 21 day fast. You can literally, depending on what you what you eat, you can literally reset your whole entire body. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. diet is absolutely important. Live wow. it. We gotta change it to live it, not live diet. It, live wow. it. <laughs> Listen, y'all. This has been Quick the Cat Podcast yes. with Marilyn Jackson. This has been fun. We thank her so much for coming through. You know, I'm BP. That's the Bishop. Ah. We'll holla at y'all next time. All right. All right. Good to see you. Hey. Peace of the game. Peace of the game. And welcome to. Quit the Cat Podcast.